Hey everybody. Time to do a little disking and exercising horses today. This time of year, quite often, it's hard to keep the horses in shape because it's too muddy to do a lot of things. But right at the moment we have this little window of time where it's pretty nice. So I'm going to go out and disc with these two. I'm not going to do it very long. Um, but I've got them on the big disc, so I don't need to do it very long to give them enough exercise for one day. So that's what I'm going to do today. So come along and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, a portion of this field is or was my corn ground last year and what I'm on right now is newly plowed sod ground that I plowed last fall and uh, this is a section at the end of the field that is really wet so I'm just staying off that section for now. I'll diss that later after it dries more. I'm just doing the parts that are dry which is the bulk of the field. So I just have this one little section left to finish up this field for the first time over. These are a tandem disc that you would normally put four horses on and I would, would and will put four horses, horses on them still this spring but since we had the time and I want to keep the horses in shape I just decided to just use two at a time and I think we've hitched horses on to this disc I think four times in the last few days and from any different length of time, no more than an hour I don't think that I've worked them. So it's just a great way to exercise them and get a little bit of work done in the process. Of course these horses are in pretty good shape from logging all winter so they can easily handle this but just not for a long period of time.
I'm sure a lot of people are going to not like the way I'm writing on this disc like I do, but this is the way I've always done it, and I'm quite comfortable doing it this way. If you were to look back for old, into old pictures of the past, this is actually the way the bulk of the farmers would have ridden their discs, or they would walk behind, which I do sometimes, I'll walk behind. I can't walk behind today though, because my lines are too short. They'd have to have another six or seven feet on them to be able to reach to the back of the discs. This disc is not in very good shape and it's quite old, but uh, there are what we call scrapers on these discs that scrape the mud and off the discs. And I, mine are shot, so I have chains wrapped around some of these discs and even pieces of wire wrapped around. Sometimes they're broken now, but uh, anyways, the chains work really good to do the same thing. It keeps the mud from building up. If they weren't there, it would just fill up built up solid between these two discs and wet ground. But these work pretty good the way I have it. They don't generally cause any troubles. But these are the scrapers, they're just dragging behind, they're not doing any good at all. But when they're hitched up bright and properly they really work good. But this disc is just so old and worn out it's, it's just not worth trying to fix them in my opinion. I just wrap chains around to keep the mud from stopping the, the disc from working properly. It's definitely a piece of equipment I need to be looking for and maybe purchase here sometime in the near future, but I really don't use it that much, so this one still does the job. I'm not plowing the headlands on this field, so I'm just pulling out on the sod ground and going around. Sometimes I plow the headlands, but it works quite well just doing it this way and a lot simpler and uh, the disc and the spring tooth will smooth it up just fine for me. Off to our left in the sod ground, I will plow a few more acres in the next coming weeks and that's where my corn will be and maybe a portion of where I'm disking even now. I try to plant corn in sod ground and then the next year I seed it down and where I'm at right now was sod in the fall so all the nutrients from the sod is still there and will, will help the corn crop for this year. So here we are coming around for our last pass of the field and last pass for today. We'll finish this up and head back.
Well, Lady and Bill got a little bit of sweat on them today. It's quite warm, but with this strong wind, it keeps them from sweating too much. So I'll put the horses away and then we'll go into the sawmill. I've got to make some fence posts. It's uh, that time of year where we got to get the fences fixed. And uh, last few years I've been actually making my own fence posts. And that's been working out great and I'll show you how I do it. Yesterday I had to make some tabletops for a customer. So here I'm getting them out of the sawmill so I can bring in my log for my fence posts. But for what I use for fence posts is tamarack or, or larch, which is the correct name for it. And uh, it's a rot resistant wood that works really good for fence posts so that's what I have and that's what I'm using. So what I will make is fence posts that are two and a half inches by two and a half inches in diameter and then about five feet tall. So this is a 10 foot log so it'll work perfect to cut it in half. Since I want two and a half inch posts, I will make my cant five inches and then cut it, them in half. It's actually five inches and an eighth to, um, because of the saw cut itself. And then I will cut it in half to get two pieces two and a half inches thick. You can see I'm putting water on the blade on the right hand side of the picture, you can see that. And that is because there's a lot of pitch or a resin in tamarack that really sticks to the blade so it's got to be washed off so I usually run the water quite a lot.
So I just take my saw and I cut a point on the ends of these posts. Cut two sides, then I flip them over and cut the other two sides. Doesn't have to be that perfect. In the spring of the year, especially the ground is soft, they pound it in quite nicely. So I'll do the one side and then I will just slide them back and sharpen the other end. And I'll just put them all together. Since the log is was 10 feet long, you just take tape measure and get about the center and the five foot mark. And then I'll just cut them in half. And I think that gives me, I think, around 24 posts. So now I'm all set to go do some fencing. So I hope you enjoy the video. You have a great day.